undefeated in the conference, and they're looking to stay that way. It's the 2023 MAZCAC Women's Soccer Championship. Bears women's soccer taking on the Owls of Westfield State University. Second MAZCAC Soccer Championship here today. Earlier this afternoon, Bears men's soccer with a wire-to-wire 5-0 -wire victory over their Westfield State counterparts. And now Bears women's soccer looking to repeat the feat. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bears Sports Network. I'm Matt Donahue. I'm Luke Mansfield. Bears won a perfect 7-0 and in conference play this year. They come in with an 11-5-1 record overall. But Westfield State just as dominant, 6-1 and in the conference. The number one seed taking on the number two seed here at Peter Mazzaferro Field on the campus of Bridgewater State University. It's really going to be a light show tonight. It was a close matchup when these two met during the regular season. Uh, I think it's going to be really just as tight again tonight, Luke. Absolutely. These are two very good teams, as you're saying, very similar in record. We'll see how this one shakes out here today. Of course, the men's team won a 5 nothing victory over the Westfield men's team just a couple hours ago. BSU will be looking to complete the clean sweep here tonight. When these two met up in the regular season, it was a victory for Bridgewater. They won 2-0. Excuse me. 2-0 over Fitchburg State to get to this point, I should say. It was a 2-1 victory over Westfield State in the regular season. That was right here at Peter Mazzaferro Field just a couple weeks ago. And all that momentum brings them to this point, looking to seal up an NCAA tournament bid. But Westfield State very competitive. When we called this game just a couple of weeks ago right here on this pitch, it was every bit as tight. Probably going to look the same way again today. In net for the Bears as usual, the sophomore from Rhode Island, Logan Levesque, who's had an enviable year. A save percentage over 83%. Six clean sheets under her belt on her way to a 10-4 and one record. And for the Owls, no slouch minding the net as well. Julia Roback, the sophomore of Chicopee. Save percentage over 77%. Three clean sheets of her own this season. These are two keepers who are going to be tough customers between the pipes. We'll see how this one plays out. A whole lot of offensive firepower going both ways for these two sides. Absolutely. Tia Tolis starts things off here. Westfield State. There's immediately with the steal right in the midfield. That was Mia Chrisafides. Chrisafides trying to slip up, gives it away on the pass. Gave it up to Slattery. Out of bounds, off the Owls. Parker couldn't quite chase it down. And it's a throw in, excuse me, for Brown. Lassard up to Shea in the midfield. Shea across to Souza working on the left, being challenged by Livy Crooks. That one's going to go out of bounds off of Livy Crooks. So another throw in here for the Bears. For a team based in western Massachusetts, same as with their men's soccer counterparts, Westfield State really does a good job recruiting all over Massachusetts and even well beyond. As far as Nairobi, Kenya for this Westfield State team. That's Kiana Patel who comes off the bench for them. Big bounce there. Pushed the other way by Lassard. Speaking of out-of-staters, that's out of bounds off of one of their stars, really, Kiana Moratsuka, the Hawaii native. Comes in with 12 goals and nine assists under her belt on the season. One of those goals was during the regular season matchup between these two sides. She opened the scoring in that game, opened it early with a beautiful shot. Bears ended up coming back to win that one 2-1, to one, though. Souza on the right. Now it's poked out of bounds. I think that was Libby Crooks again. Crooks, the Wilbraham native, played her high school ball at Minichog Regional. Offering some pressure there. McDuffie getting spun around. Owls trying to pull it the other way. I mean, technically... Bailey Brown just going to clear this one away out of bounds for the Bears. That pass was meant for Slattery from Bertiam. Katie Slattery also from Wilbraham, also a Minichog graduate. Headed by Parker. Out off the Bears again, and they're playing a little bit of slash and burn defense early. Throw in comes to Tallis. Bears just keep on bouncing. At that time, it was Robarge. 
Parker looking for a way through the double team. Slips between. Good ball across, but no blue shirts in the area to collect. Chris Afidi is trying to take it the other way. Runs into the wall, but still manages to collect. Robar just to put on the brakes to step back and grab it. Now she's trying to outrun Slattery. Slattery outruns her and kicks it out. Brown will throw it in. First three minutes of the match in the books. Chris Afidi's the spin move. Runs into the wall again. It's deflected out of bounds by Slattery. Another throw in here for Bailey Brown. She'll find Chris Afidis, but there's two Westfield State Owls right there. That's a whistle and a foul as Chris Afidis and Aaron White go to ground. White, one of the locals recruited out west, a Plimpton native, played her high school ball at my own alma mater, Silver Lake. It'll be a free kick from the side for Bailey Brown after that foul. One woman wall of Parker in front of her. That one's really tall over to the corner. Still bouncing around, and it hits the side of the net. I think that might have been Dewhurst with the free kick there. Brown was a little bit further back over near the 40. No problem at all there for the Owl netminder, Julia Roback. Stepping around, Jada Cochran. Cochran, another local from Middleborough, or at least more local than Westfield. Moritsuka's tearing up ahead on the right side. This was exactly where she got that first goal in the regular season matchup, that same spot, but she gets disrupted by Sydney Dewhurst. Kiana Moritsuka was trying to take out the do-it-yourself kit again. It's a good job by Dewhurst disrupting that. Moritsuka has been a fantastic player for Westfield State in just her first year with the team. Transferred in from Division II Hawaii Pacific. That one's going to go out the side, pushed by Dewhurst, who at various points this year has been named the MAZCAC Offensive Player of the Week and most recently Defensive Player of the Week as a defender. Been quite the force for this Bears team this whole season. It's not often that someone who sits in your back line much of the game leads the team in goals. She has nine of them plus six assists coming in tonight. Leads the team in shots as well with 55. Rumbling in, p possible danger. Good look there, deflected. Bertiam had a clean look at first, but Shea was in the middle of it and took it with her body. It's going to go out for a Westfield corner. Good job by Abby Shea, just throwing herself in front of that ball, deflecting it out of bounds. That could have been bad there for this Bears team. Taking the corner kick is Aaron White. Former Laker and now Westfield Owl, Aaron White, from the left side. Good ball in. That's a good spot. Still not quite cleared. Second time pushed out by Bailey Brown. She knocked over Parker. No foul on the play. Yeah. Out the side that time. The keeper three on corners on defense. And offside. Actually, Westfield was offside even before it trickled out to the side. Thought it was going to go out of bounds, but instead Westfield was just plain old offside on the play. Yeah, Crook's a little bit too far up over there. So the Bears will get this free kick. Big boot forward. Conrad at midfield. Tripped up, and that's going to be a foul. She gets taken to the floor by Emily Ottomanello, the Agawam native. So another free kick, this time inside Owl territory for Sydney Dewhurst. Good boot in, couple jockeying, bouncing around, and it slipped right past Roback. That just bounced its way right in, and Sydney Dewhurst from almost midfield has her 10th goal of the season. What a way to notch number 10 by Sydney Dewhurst. Skyler Conrad gets tripped up there. The refs blow the whistle, and Dewhurst takes the free kick from the Bears logo and absolutely drills it past Robach for her 10th goal. That's a stunner, and the Bears are up 1-0 early. Spinning on the left comes Parker, but a whistle and a foul, and Parker is not pleased. As she threw her shoulder into Bailey Brown there, and Brown hit the ground. There's been some physicality going on between the two of them so far in the first seven minutes of that game. Bailey Brown draws the call that time. There's been a couple she hasn't gotten. 
Robarge puts it sky high. Taking the ground off the head of Slattery. Here's Robarge on the right side. Slips it through to McDuffie. McDuffie tried to get it back to her. She couldn't get in front. Slattery will throw it in for the Owls. That's two words, unassisted, in the seventh minute. Just an absurd goal. I mean, come on. I wish we had instant replay for you folks right now so you could see that again. Whistle on a foul, and it's going to go Westfield's way. Bears committed that one, and it's going to be a free kick. I think that was on that Brown-Parker matchup yet again. So Jenna Hurlbert, another Silver Lake graduate, a native of Kingston, will take this free kick. That slipped right between the legs of Bertion. Couldn't get a boot on it quite. Well placed. Pass by Conrad Robars right back to her. McDuffie almost gets it back, but there's nobody there to collect. Sent out of bounds by Cochran. See, that's my bad. The 8 and the 0. Confused 18 and 10 right there. Throw in for Brown. Chris Afides. Back to Lassard. Lassard spinning through, trying to get it through to Shea. No luck. Here comes Parker the other way. Good steal by the Owls. Parker gets tripped and falls on top of the ball. Ouch. And that's going to be a free kick for Westfield. So Kiana Moritsuka will take this one. Or at least it sure looks like she will. She's in position. The Mililani Hawaii native. A little ways north of Honolulu on the island of Oahu, if my Hawaii geography serves. A long way from home. Indeed. A little bit colder. Long ball by Moritsuka well over the net. She's a player with quite a boot on her herself, Kiana Moritsuka. Delaney Parker leads this Westfield side with 10 goals on, excuse me, 17 goals on the year, but Moritsuka close behind with 12. 10 assists for Parker is what I was starting to say, nine for Moritsuka, so she's able to create for others and herself, which is an invaluable skill. Brown trying to move up the middle. Parker's really working with a head of steam and forces Brown to make kind of a crummy pass. Yeah, Parker turned on the wheels right there and tracked down Bailey Brown. And Brown just had no choice but to try to lose it and get it up to Robarge, who couldn't track it down. Roback gets it to midfield. A lot of colliding. Brown put it in deep looking for Audra McDuffie. Wasn't able to find her. This time she will. McDuffie over the deflection. Nobody quite there. Conrad's trying to race in to find it, but it ends up with Cochran. And this Westfield State back line, down a goal early, tightening up on the defensive end and doing a good job of it. Throw into Muratsuka. Trying to spin, drops back, boot in by White. Parker's trying to find a way through the double team, can't quite. Lassard coming away with it. Sends it back the other way, rejected back into Bears territory by Cochran playing up. Mia Crisofidi is going to come up with it off that 50-50. Tearing through the middle. She gets interrupted there. Not quite. Robar just trying to come in to interrupt it, but she runs into friendly fire. Crisofidis, and it ends up with Aaron White. And subsequently, Morgan Bertiam. Bertiam through the middle. Nobody there. Moritsuka is trying to close in, but it gets to Levesque. A fraction of a second before Kiana Moritsuka would have caught up with it. Punt from the edge of the 18. Bounder here, out of bounds. Robars was looking to make a move on that one, but a little bit too much on it for her. Katie Slattery with the throw into Parker. Taken away immediately by Chris Afidi. He's trying to spin around. That could have been a good move, but not quite. White got in the middle of it, but it ends up with Dewhurst. Push through. Given away on the pass. Moratsuka is trying to tear past Dewhurst. Moratsuka could have a good look. It's broken up by Lassard. Good read by McKenna Lassard getting in the way of Moratsuka steaming forward. Had a direct look. 
Out the back that time for a goal kick for Bridgewater. Looks like Levesque might defer the kick to Dewhurst. Levesque, a very competent goal kick kicker, but you can understand wanting to keep herself fresh in every way possible, taking away as much of the strain, even if it's something as relatively minor as a goal kick. Trying to spin as tallest at midfield. That's pushed out. Owls will get a throw in. A little over 32 to play in the first half. Bears with an early goal. Sidney Dewhurst from the logo off a free kick. Conrad trying to spin, gives it up. In the middle, Tallis. Brown rejection the other way. Moritsuka header. Moritsuka trying to reclaim it. Headed back by Dewhurst. Now closing in, potentially good look. Tallis was blocked point blank by Dewhurst. Cleared only as far as Ottomanello. Bertiam taking the ground, that's a foul. Yeah, tripped up right there by Mia Chris Afibis. And that free kick is going to be taken by Aaron White. I've seen a couple of the kicking duties go to Aaron White so far. <laughs> White, a well-placed boot in. Pushed first by Dewhurst. Corralled by Bertiam to the other side. Meant for Crooks. She's trying to chase it down. Pushed out again by Souza. It'll stay with the Owls. Throw in taken by Cochran. That pass was meant for Shea. She blew a tire. Ends up with McDuffie, though, trying to push forward. Robarge in the midfield, not someplace she usually is, right smack dab on the logo. Usually keen to operate on the fringes of the pitch. Brown got it up to Crisofidis, who lost it, but Shea able to recover. First to Sweeney, and then to Souza, push forward. Tough collision there, no foul on the play as Robarge was bumped. Spin move, Parker's taken to ground now, still no foul. They are really just letting them play tonight. <laughs> Very physical game so far. Moritsuka on the left side. She could be trouble for a setup or a score. Got the bounce off of Lassard, and it's an Owl's corner. So it looks like it's going to be Aaron White once again for Westfield State. Second corner of the match already for the Owls. White also took the first and also from the left side. Owls looking to draw this one up off the set piece. Good ball in, still bouncing around. Dewhurst trying to reject it backwards, not super deep. Bertiam trying to collect it, does, but gives it right away on the pass to Chris Afides, who gets it to Robard. Second win pushed backwards by Ottomanello. Muratsuka manages to take it to ground. Moritsuka, the footwork, trying to put Bailey Brown on skates. Doesn't quite. She's getting double teamed, and the double team paid off. Brown and Lassard. Good job by Bailey Brown and McKenna Lassard sticking with it there. Able to get that ball away at least for a second. Dewhurst trying to cook around Parker. Does, if only for a moment. Across, Shea trying to take it into Owl territory. Does. Shea breaking out the do-it-yourself kit. That one's pushed backwards. Another great read that time by Jenna Hurlbert, and she got right in the middle of the pass. No foul on that one either. Sweeney with a little bit of space. She bumps into a player. No foul there either, and they are really letting them play tonight. Bertiam with space, trying to push forward. Meant for Parker, interrupted by Lassard. Out of bounds. So that's going to set up a throw in for Slattery. Yeah, so like As you said, they've really been letting them play. There's been a lot of contact, and outside of a couple calls, they really haven't been calling it. The calls have been super obvious stuff, like big trips. Players getting taken to the deck. A little surprised that wasn't one. Maratsuka hits the floor. Official to play on. I am kind of astonished at some of the calls that aren't being made tonight. At least not yet. Souza trying to chase it down, getting dogged by Thomas. It's going to be out of bounds off the Owls. Shane Brown drew a couple of calls for the Bears, and those were very blatant, but other than that, 
The refs have kept the whistle around their neck. Throw into Shea. Shea back to Lassard. Conrad in the midfield. Trying to put the spins on Ottomanello. Double teamed, flanked on both sides, getting bookcased, but now she pulls through. Up ahead, Robarge operating on the fringe now on the left side. Robarge trying to cut around, deflected there. Good defense. They're still saying play on. These are some wacky no calls as she and Cochran went down together. And I mean that going both ways. We've seen a couple of players on each side get just kind of housed and <laughs> no whistle at all. <laughs> Herbert's going to take the free kick from back here. We may finally have had a foul against the Bears. Push forward. Muratsuka's trying to tear out for it, but Levesque comes out to grab. Good scoop by Levesque. Muratsuka had Bailey Brown beat. So Not by much, though. Collect. Not by much. Bailey Brown, a very fast player and a very good defender for this Bears team. A junior out of Plymouth, graduate of Plymouth North High. She's been an important part of the Bridgewater back line this year, and there is one of those big obvious trips that's going to get you a whistle every time as Bertiam hits the floor. Yeah, they'll call that one against Jenna Sweeney. So White will take the free kick from just inside Bear territory. Calling about 50 yards, all things told, from the goal. Big boot. Headed back, Dewhurst looked like she got her noggin on it. Massard pushing it the other way, second chance. Skylar Conrad able to play that for the Bears, but she hits Con the ground and she'll draw a whistle. It's going to be White who knocked her over, and now the Bears get a free kick. Taking it from just inside Owl territory with 25 and a half to play in the first half. It's a dangerous spot for Sydney Dewhurst. She scored on the first time around from just about there, and that header a little bit too wide. It looked like that might have been Conrad. I think that was either Conrad. I think that might have been Audra McDuffie. Both in the neighborhood. Tried for that redirection. Whoever was going for it didn't get there. Interrupted off the goal kick by Chris Afides. McDuffie. Tough push there on Bertiam, and that's going to be a foul against Audra McDuffie. Here the woes coming from the stands beneath us on that. These people were looking for the call. Call was made, and it's fair. Jenna yeah. Probert kicks it away. Owls make the first substitution of the night. Crooks will get a breather. Her replacement will be Kiki McNary, the Vermont native. Shea in the midfield getting chased down by White. White slides and pushes it away. Good slide tackle. They're saying no foul still. Dewhurst, Massard the other way meant for Robarge, instead disrupted by Cochran. Played off the head by Muratsuka. Push forward, Bailey Brown outruns Tallis. Forward again, rejected by Slattery. Brown trying to keep it in, just stays inside. Trickles out the back and it's a goal kick for the Bears. They're gonna say last touched. That was a very interesting move. Official comes right up into the grill of Tia Tallis to explain that that's a no foul, apparently. Good effort or, I think it's a warning. Keeping the ball in bounds. So Tallis doesn't get booked, but the official lets her know that the, uh, the leash is not infinitely long, as it were. Cochran trying to spin around. Bounced off of Souza on the play. Well, we figured this would be a uh, stout matchup between these two, and it has been so far. Long ball in. Levesque grabs it direct off the feet of Parker. She was trying to take one from about 30 yards out. Yeah, coming into this, we knew this was going to be a close, tough matchup. I didn't expect it to be as physical as it's been. There's been a lot going on. It's been a boxing match out there in the early going. 
Chris Afidi's trying to keep this one in bounds. She's not going to be able to get there in time, and Slattery will now have a throw. Toss in from Moritsuka. Moritsuka triple team trying to navigate around, just gets it back out to Slattery, who's kicking it forward. It's going to stay in. She was able to get that one around Brown, McDuffie, and Chris Afidis. Just no blue shirts in the area. Dewhurst lets it roll out for the goal kick. Looks like Dewhurst will take it herself once again. 22-40 to play in the first half. There's up 1-0. This one's for all the marbles in the Mazcac. Chris Afidis tried to get her head on it, wasn't able to. Conrad on the right side, working around Ottomanello. Conrad, little push, no call there. Through to McDuffie, oh, taken away. Good read by Slattery, and she peels it right off the pass. Up to Muratsuka. Feed through, too much gas on it for Parker. Parker's trying to chase it down. Delaney Parker's really putting on the wheels. She got pushed by Dewhurst and is looking for a foul. And now a late one, and it's going to be a yellow card on Delaney Parker. I believe that card is on Delaney Parker. It was a little bit ambiguous, the officials positioning. He was right in between Parker and Dewhurst. Parker threw her hands up in the air looking for something. Dewhurst. I'm not sure actually, because it looks like it's going to be a free kick for Moratsuka. I think that was against Dewhurst. That may have been a yellow card. Yes, it is a yellow card on Sydney Dewhurst for that push. That makes more sense. And now Kiana Moratsuka is going to take this free kick from the left side with a three woman wall in front of her. It's McDuffie, Shea, and Robarge in front of her. Moritsuka arcs it in, cutting forward. Levesque the save! Ottomanello tried to head it in, and Levesque was right there. Good job by Logan Levesque. Great read on the head by Ottomanello. And Logan Levesque keeps the Bears up by one. Levesque's earned Mazcac Defensive Player of the Week honors at one point herself this season. You see why with a play like that. Tremendous stop. Memory serves fairly recently as well as that one goes off the foot of Maratsuko. Just a couple weeks ago. Bailey Brown will take the throw in. Brown looking for her target. It's going to be McDuffie. Through to Chris Afides. Pulls back Dewhurst. Maratsuka's challenging her stoutly. Dewhurst has to get that one out of the way quickly. Across to Robarge. Robarge being pushed up by McNary. Trying to slip around. Big bounce off of Chris Afides and her sparring partner, Bertiam. Now back the other way, Ottomanello. Sweeney trying to work through the double team. Gets kind of clotheslined. It's going to be a foul against Westfield. Somehow Sydney Sweeney was able to... Sydney Sweeney, Jenna Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> Rest of her Close. <laughs> Dewhurst is going to take this one from the logo, this time from within her own end. Last time she took that free kick, it was a goal. Bouncing around and coming right out for the catch, wasting no time, is Roback. A little surprised Jenna Sweeney was able to stay on both feet. She got bookcased there for the foul. Tallis the other way. Bouncer off of Parker, trying to chase it down is McNary. McNary does. Put Souza on skates. Now McNary's trying to cut around from the left side. Gets challenged harshly by Lassard. Takes a second to get up. And Kiki McNary is not feeling so great after running into McKenna Lassard. Back up. Going to take a second to get to her feet. But seemingly otherwise no worse for wear. Throw in comes to Parker. Parker gets it taken away, and now the Bears working on the far side. Robarge bites off a little bit more than she can chew. The fight to keep it in, McNary. Off the side. Well, Westfield is doing a good job pressing the issue the last few minutes. But for their next trick, they're going to have to figure out how to put it in the back of the net. Some great chances they've made so far. Certainly a team that's capable of scoring is a long ball by Parker. Lands cleanly with Levesque. They know how to make the chances. Westfield State just trying to find the one magic touch that'll tie this thing up at one. Pulls it 
pulling down. Parker across to Tallis, pushed out of the way by Brown. Deflected back the other way by Ottomanello. Chris Afidis and Bertiam run right into each other. This is a wrestling match. Bertiam gets the better of it, finally tracks down the ball, only as far as Sidney Souza. Robarge up, stopped by Herbert. Plays blown dead. And it's going to be a foul against Bridgewater State. It'll be a free kick for the Owls from relatively deep. Herbert, Herbert will be the one who takes it. Over the top of everyone. Comes down with Souza. Herbert, deflection. Now Conrad in the middle. Gives it away on the pass to Cochran. Ottomanello. Forward, that was a little bit too much for Parker to handle. No trouble at all, here comes Bertie on the collect. On the left side, trying to work her way around Bailey Brown. Bertie, I'm trying to put on the Jets now as she closes in on the back, but it is out the back for a Bridgewater goal kick. Bailey Brown defended that possession to the last. Dewhurst will take the kick. That last play, in fact, the free kick by Herbert was an offside on Bridgewater State. I stand corrected, not a foul. Bears will make a sub. Conrad will get a breather, and Natalie Matos, who just left the ball on the sideline, will come in in her place. That well, free kick went off the head of one of the Westwood State players. That's going to result in the throwing you just saw from Bailey Brown. She got it over to me for some feedies. Dewhurst. Now into Owl territory. Dewhurst trying to poke through the middle. Dewhurst really putting on the wheels. This is when she's at her most dangerous. Sydney Dewhurst right there and reaching down to make the save is Roback. <laughs> Julia Roback undaunted by a fierce drive by Sydney Dewhurst. It's like not triple teaming Devin Nelson. I'm like, you don't like right. watch film and scout like right. I'm not. Tough contest there, no foul. Back the other way, Moratsuka wants a piece. Levex out for it again. Sweeney got tripped up there for a second. Good job sticking with Moratsuka there. Not that you expect a player like Kiana Moratsuka to give up on a possession, but boy, she just does not quit. Slipping through, oh, takeaway. Thomas peeled that one right off. Gonna get it back off the deflection. Dallas through to Moretsuka on the right. Lassard trying to block her off. Moretsuka, the footwork, keeps it to the side, trying to give Lassard the spins, puts it in. No blue shirts there. Thomas was nearest. Cochran, the throw in. Little under 16 to play. Bears with the 1-0 lead. But the Owls are very much in this game. Out of bounds there. They're going to say off of Robarge. The Rowan finds Maratsuko. Maratsuko with two watching her. Puts it aside. McNary gives it away on the pass to Robarge. Feed up meant for McDuffie. Now it's going to go out of bounds off McDuffie. Wasn't able to get real control of that. She's starting to get spun around by Herbert. It's another throw in. It'll be Cochran again. Bertiam. Tough collision there with Chris Afides. Pushed backwards by White. Given to Dewhurst though. McDuffie trying to speed in for it, can't quite get there, working through a double team. Almost a mutual steal by Ottomanello and Bertiam. Bertiam through the middle, the cutting, McNary rejected the other way. Ottomanello. Ottomanello tailed hard by Chris Afides, drops it back to Bertiam. Bertiam falls on top of the ball. Ouch, and that's going to be a foul against Abby Shea. I like this center wrap. Very good. Very on top of the 
Another free kick again taken by Moratsuka. Westfield looking for the tie and goal. Ball in, headed backwards by Dewhurst. Robards the next pickup, but Moratsuka gets it back, and she can be dangerous with space. Long ball there. It might have been wide anyway, but Levesque comes out for it no matter. And if it was going to be wide, it was only going to be wide by a hair's breadth. That looked close, especially from our angle up here. Logan Levesque makes a good defensive stop on it. She had a better look at it than we do up here, and Moratsuka, certainly someone we know operates with pretty lethal accuracy. It's another Owls free kick. Get some contact by Chris Afides is going to result in that free kick. <laughs> White takes it. Bounder in, headed out of the way by Souza. Robards trying to run it down alongside Ottomanello. Robards has some wheels, wasn't able to track it down in time right there. And that's going to be a throw in for the Westfield State. Sweeney trying to tear the other way, nearly gets her pocket picked. Shea able to pick it up at midfield. White hit the ground, no foul. Bertiam drops it back to White. Here's McNary trying to find a cut. Decides to drop it back, gives it away on the pass to McDuffie. Matos tearing through. Read that one so well. Gets it across to McDuffie. Bounder up top, meant for Matos to corral again. A little bit too far to Matos right right there, but a good pass. I'm just going to hit the side of a net collected by Robach. It was a great cut through on the initial pass by Natalie Matos, but Bears not able to turn the play into much of anything. Sub on now for Westfield State. Aaron White's going to step off. It looks like... Not even sure. I think it might be either Warnick or Moran who just came in. It's Moran. Ryan Moran, the junior from New Hampshire, subs in. That one rolls out. It's going to be a throw in there for Olivia Robarge. Robarge looking for a target. McDuffie's nearest. She opts to go over everyone and get it to Chris Afides. Back. Deep cross looking for Matos, but interrupted by Westfield State. Bailey, sorry. <laughs> Brown's going to have a feeling they're going to say the same thing. Brown kicks yeah. back up field. McNary really speeding up ahead on the right side, trying to outrun Lassard. McNary still working, taking out the do-it-yourself kit. McNary looking for the cross for Moritsuka, and it's stopped. Bailey Brown got in there, so too did Levesque. That could have been a dangerous play. A 12-goal scorer getting help from McNary with her five assists on the year, and that one sails well over and well out. McNary still looking for her first goal of the season. But boy, is she great at the setup game, and that's a skill just as valuable as any in this sport. A little bit of a stoppage in play. I think Sydney Dewhurst has to tie her cleat. Yeah, I think so. Clock stops with 10 minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half. Bears with the one nil lead, but it sure doesn't feel like it. This has been a slugfest going both ways. Exactly what we expected, basically. McNary with a little bit of space. Shea closing on her. She slips through, gets it to three white shirts. Lassard pushes the other way. McDuffie gets it pulled off the pass by Moran. In the middle, Tallis challenging Sweeney hard. A push, no foul. On the right side, McNary's trying to run it down before, or Souza can. That was going to go out, set up a throw in for Souza. <laughs> Bears have the lead, at least in theory. But the Owls have created some pretty great chances. They've forced the pressure a lot, just like they're doing now. 
Lassard interrupts that one. Robards trying to take it the other way. Gets outrun. Dropped back to Ottomanello. Big push forward. Muratsuka's trying to run for it. Brown trying to spin around her to get it out of the way. Cleared only as far as McNary. Good move to work around McDuffie. Still airborne. Chris Afidis can't quite get it. Collision there. Bertiam gets shoved to the floor, and that is somehow going to be a Bridgewater State foul? Huh? That's going to be a foul against Westfield State is, is what I meant to express my surprise at. That's somehow going to be a foul benefiting Bridgewater State. Perhaps there was something on that play I didn't quite see. I would have assumed that push that sent Bertiam to the floor would have been called a foul against Bridgewater, but it was called against Westfield. That's what I was expressing my surprise at. It's a sub. So Kiana Muratsuka gets a breather. Her replacement's going to be Kiana Patel, the Kenyan. Came over here from Nairobi to play college ball in Westfield, Massachusetts. Moran in the middle. Dish forward. Didn't quite go anywhere. Here comes Shea trying to spin around. That's her pocket picked, and here comes Bertie on the other way. Taken again this time by Sweeney. A couple of good rips. Shoving match between two number 26s. Chris Afidi's coming the other way, and Moran watching her. Now Moran, the boot the other way. Here's Parker. Parker across to Moran. That's bumped into by McDuffie. Doesn't matter. McNary trying to chase it out the side. No can do. Bears ball. Lassard, the rejection the other way. <laughs> McDuffie trying to put the spin move on. Feed through, pushed aside again by Slattery. That's how a lot of this game has looked. Collision there. Big bump between Dewhurst and Patel. Dewhurst from deeper back, though, than the first two free kicks. Headed by Parker. Patel got a touch, but Brown pushes it out of the way. A whistle and a foul against Bridgewater State as Parker was taken to ground. Yeah, Dewhurst collided with Parker right there. It took him a second to blow the whistle. I thought she might have got away with one there, but that's going to set up a Westfield State free kick. And it looks like it's going to be Colbert who takes it. Jenna Hurlbert has an assist on the season. Looking for another one here. Westfield still looking for the tying goal on yet another set piece with five and a half to play in the half. Headed out of the way by Dewhurst. Robards trying to keep it in bounds, but won't. It'll stay with the Owls. Throw in now. The spin move. Lassard peels it off. Deflection. Might have bounced out off of Moran. Lassard a push forward. Moran puts it skyward the other way. Lassard gets it back and pushes it forward to Sweeney. Robards can't get it, or touches it out of bounds, rather. Dewhurst. Push forward, rejected backwards by Bertiam. Parker trying to jockey for it with Brown. Parker collects, trying to dish aside, gives it away to Matos. Matos running out with Slattery. They're going to say it was last touched by Matos. Again, some physicality there by both teams. Parker hit the 
Brown, they just let him play. That one goes out of bounds off of Chris Afidis. Another throw in here for Katie Slatter. Tough contests both sides of the pitch. Chris Afidis, spin move backwards, McDuffie. Deflected right away by Ottomanello. Kept in by Parker, good move. Cross over there, meant for Patel, bounce, but not quite the one she wanted. Only as far as McNary, though. Kiki McNary too tall from the side. Robards will get a breather. Twenty to play in the first half. Bears up one goal to none on the Westfield State Owls. This game for all the marbles in the Mazcac. It's Tristan Gomes who comes in for Olivia Robarge. Gomes, another Middleborough native, playing against her fellow Middleborough Sachem, Jada Cochran. forward by Moran. Easy one bouncer for Levesque. Under three left now in the first half. Bears still lead one nothing off that early free kick goal by Sydney Dewhurst. The defense has just been gutting out this game so much going both ways that except for that insane free kick goal by Dewhurst there really hasn't been a ton of offense, just chances or glimmers of chances, but nothing quite so thrilling. Here's McDuffie. Gomes tried to put that one on for Andre McDuffie a little bit too much on that kick. Hurlbert escorted it out. <laughs> Under two minutes to play in the half. Roback, the goal kick. Bouncer in. Sweeney trying to spin, gets a little bit of room. Has to drop back. Too far forward for anyone. Minute and a half. Roback punts his own away. She's going to hit midfield. Trying to gather his Cochran. Over to McNary. Just keeps it inside. Tiptoeing on the line. That was close. Yeah. And now McNary is seen out of bounds. Throw in for Bridgewater State. Out again off the Owls. A minute to play. One minute remaining in the half. One minute. This is certainly a far cry from the first game we saw here this afternoon. Uh -huh. Five goals in the first half hour, let alone the first half. And that was all the scoring it took. David Nelson knocks a hat trick in six minutes. <laughs> Women's soccer playing a fierce game as well, but being stood up stoutly by a tough Westfield State defensive defensive unit, I should say. Touch there, that's a WWE move between Moran and Shea, and there's a card. Moran's gonna get booked for that one, and here's a free kick in relatively close territory for the Bears in the final 15 seconds. This was closer than the Bears' first free kick that resulted in that Sydney Dewhurst goal. Looks like it'll be Dewhurst yet again taking it. We have some discussion going on in between, I think, Shea, Sweeney, and one of the referees. So now a booking a piece. Dewhurst written up for a tough push earlier in the half. And now with 15 seconds left in the first half, Ryan Moran goes into the book as well for the Owls. Dewhurst a boot. Right there is Roback. Had good velo, but she read it well. 
six, five, four, So that'll do it for the three, first half of play. Two, one nothing. One. Off that Sydney Dewhurst free kick goal. Well, we expected a knockdown, drag out fight today. Boy, we're getting one. After 45 really hard fought minutes, Bears won, Owls nil, and plenty to come in the second half. We'll be right back with you after halftime for more of the MazCAC Women's Soccer Championship here on the Bears Sports Network.
45 in the books, five to go, and it has been hard fought. Bridgewater State with a 1-0 lead over the Westfield State Owls in the 2023 MASCAC Women's Soccer Championship, and still plenty of competition to go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome aboard or welcome back here on the Bears Sports Network. I'm Matt Donahue. I'm Mansfield. Only score of the game so far was an improbable free kick goal from the logo for who else but Sidney Dewhurst. But that is all the offense either side has been able to muster so far tonight. This one has been really tightly defended going both ways. Westfield has put up tough defense every time Bridgewater State has had even a whiff of a chance and vice versa. It's been quite the physical showing for both teams as well. For the most part, mm. the officials have been letting them play. There have been a couple obvious calls and a booking a piece for each side as well. Dewhurst for the Bears and Moran for the Owls. The two who have been shown yellows. The physicality really cannot be understated. These two sides have been pushing and pulling and shoving and knocking each other down all night. And you got to imagine that kind of physical play is going to continue here in the second half. Dropped well back. Owls need a second to reset. Here's Hurlbert pushing up on the right side for Cochran. Cochran being challenged harshly by McDuffie. Case in point with all that pushing. McDuffie trying to keep her foot on it, keeps it inbound, but gives it away off the pass to Crooks. Crooks with a little bit of room, but doesn't take it. Bouncer there. White doesn't get nearly much velo on it at all, and Levesque grabs it easily. Levesque looking to put this one in deep. She'll get it right about to midfield. Bouncer spun around. Bertiam trying to... Get it forward. Doesn't get it forward to much of anyone. It's out of bounds. Brown to throw it in. When I say an improbable logo goal by Sidney Dewhurst in the first half, the only score of the game so far, I mean literally probably about the right teeth of the bear. Oh, here's a close look, though. Here's a tough one, well tall, off the foot of Crooks, and she can't believe it. Had a beautiful slot, put herself in the right place at the right time, but hit it just wrong. As I was saying, when I say a tough goal by Dewhurst, I mean literally probably about 50 yards more from the mouth of the goal and just somehow managed to bounce that one past Julia Roback, which is a tough order. Here's Souza on the left. Coughs it up on the pass. McDuffie gets it back, but deflects it out of bounds. Cochran will throw it in. Souza brings it to ground, but it comes to Crooks. Lassard the other way. Over McDuffie. Conrad trying to chase it down. This time, Hurlbert will push it out. Helped up by McDuffie. And you got to figure, despite all the physicality, despite the chippiness of this game, a lot of sportsmanship, a lot of mutual respect between these two MASCAC rivals here. Here's Muratsuka. Push forward, intended for Parker, broken up. And finally comes down to Lassard. Other way by White. Parker gets her head on it. Trying to keep it up in the air is Thomas. Aside, spinning with it. Muratsuka doesn't take it, leaves it. Crooks across to Cochran on the right. Cochran ball across, cutting Crooks. Can't get to it in time. And that is pretty much exactly how most of this game has looked. <laughs> really tightly contested, really tightly defended, going both ways. 41 minutes to play in the match, and the Bears with the 1-0 lead, though. Winner of this one books a spot in the NCAA tournament. Lassar to push forward only as far as Bertiam. Parker was trying to get in, couldn't. She was blocked out by Brown. Sweeney, slip forward. McDuffie gives it up on the deflection to Ottomanello. Thomas. Forward from White. Dewhurst trying to chase it down now, getting a lot of pressure from Crooks, and she has to put it off the side. Parker, D 
didn't get the cut she wanted. It was a clean look, though. Just couldn't get the arc. Not enough movement on that ball. That one, Lovec really didn't have to do anything about it. Just went out of bounds. Lovec will take the goalie kick herself this time. We've seen her defer a couple to Sydney Dewhurst throughout the night. I say night. It's only 5 o'clock. <laughs> it looks like it might as well be 8.30 out there. Welcome to November in Massachusetts. It's a brisk evening here on the campus of Bridgewater State University and beautiful but very dark and gloomy Bridgewater, Massachusetts, but hardly any wind to speak of. The little flags on the uprights aren't moving an inch. Which may or may, may, or may not be a help on the offense going either way. A couple of times we've seen shots not quite get the arc that their shooter was looking for. Perhaps that could change here in the second half. Chris Afides is trying to spin around, somehow works out of the jam. Feed across, Shea can't quite get to it. Only as far as Brown, big deflection there. Sweeney's trying to cut her way in. Conrad looking for a way out, not quite. Tallis pushes it out of the way. Here's Maratsuka on the left. Maratsuka in the rundown with Brown. Puts on the brakes, gets a little bit more space. Trying to feed forward. That one hits the side of the net. Looked like that one might have been Bertie on. Another goal kick here for Levesque. A little bit of a low one, going to go off Dewhurst. Maritsuka forward to Parker. Lassard trying to interrupt. Tough collision there. Foul against the Bears. Some more of that physicality we talked a lot about during the first half. Just call that one there. It seems like Parker's been involved in a lot of it. Parker's been involved in a lot of the plays. That would make sense. So Maritsuka will set up to take this free kick head on. They're going to try their luck with a four-woman wall in front of her. Shea moving to the left side of the play. Moritsuka long ball in. Levesque out for it, but she can't corral it. It bounces off her fingertips. And Kiana Moritsuka ties this one up. The floodgates open for the Westfield State Owls. And Kiana Muratsuka with a big score draws this one up at one apiece. But who else but Muratsuka there with a goal. Two goals against BSU this year. Had the opening goal when these two teams first met just a couple weeks ago. Owls fell 2-1 during that game. Suddenly this match takes on a completely different complexion. And with 37 and a half minutes left in regulation, it's a goal each. It's the soccer guys, right? They're on the left-hand side. Brown trying to break fast up the right side. Push across, meant for Robarge. Brown again puts on the brakes. That one's escorted off the side. But Bailey Brown will take the throw in. That's the 13th goal of the season for Moratsuka. She has been lights out all year for these Owls. 13 goals and still number two on the team. <laughs> Behind only Parker. We mentioned both of them being involved in so many of these plays, so many clutch moments. Long ball in, still being bounced around. Shea wants a piece. Comes to ground in front of Crooks. Big push up ahead. Moritsuka's putting on the Jets. Dewhurst is going to get to it first to send it back to Levesque. Now Levesque, in turn, will boot this one out the side. Don't know if that was necessarily her intention. Not a lot on that. It's going to set up a throw in here for Westfield State. Jada Cochran. Moritsuka somehow keeps it inbounds, doing the dance with Souza. 
Moritsuka across, nearly stopped. Chris Afidis couldn't get in front of it, but Bailey Brown able to corral for the Bears. Bailey Brown just going to try to get this one away and clear it, and the Bears will do just that. Conrad pushed forward, nobody in the neighborhood. Hurlburt's tracking it down, getting it to Roback. Well, this game looks completely different now with a little under 36 minutes to play. A goal apiece. Free kick goal in the first half for Sidney Dewhurst. Free kick goal in the second half for Kiana Moritsuka. Here's Moritsuka again on the right side, operating with great haste. Moritsuka slips through the middle. Feed through. Not quite. Soft roller there for Levesque. She'll take that. Not sure if that was supposed to be a setup for Tallis, who wasn't quite there but was close. Either way, easy work for Levesque to gather. It wasn't really enough on that one to get past her. Levesque's kick first, touched by a Westfield State player. That blows right between Robarge's feet, and Hurlbert pushes the other way. Tallis set up forward a little too far for Maratsuka. Second win streaking right in is Aaron White. Crooks back to White. Threw now to Maratsuka. A little bit of space across to Crooks, and they're tri triangling it. Excuse me. Crooks on the right side. Being watched by Souza. Ball in right into the breadbasket of Levesque. Under 35 to play. This would be quite a thriller if we end up with some extra soccer at the end of this. But still plenty of time for anything to happen. Chris Afidis. Brown forward. Back to Lassard. Lassard through to Robarge, trying to spin around, trying to outrun Ottomanello. Robarge cutting through, just keeps it in a side and right into the hands of Roback. Trying to put the setup on there for Audra McDuffie. Robarge has the wheels. She worked her way through that backfield of Westfield State, but collected well by Roback. Two sophomore keepers, Roback and Levesque, who have been on point all evening. Each has let up just one kind of quirky free kick goal apiece, but two very competent netminders. Just going to roll wide right into the hands of Roebuck. From the edge of the 18, a boot. Headed around. Brown trying to grab it. Parker also trying to put it out in front. Moratsuka's tearing forward. Dewhurst has to kick it out to the side. Good play by Dewhurst. Just trying to lose it. Moratsuka has the speed. And she's just been absolutely fantastic for this Westfield State team. Already had one goal and looked like for a second she might add two. That first one was off the free kick, but when Kiana Muratsuka puts on the jetpack and flies, boy, there can be no stopping her. Under 33 minutes to play in the match, we're tied up at one. Parker, with some fancy footwork, cross aside, meant for Muratsuka, didn't get the look. Dewhurst was in front of her and Levesque picks it up. Through the middle. Bertiam in a bit of a joust. Oh, pushing forward. Conrad possibly a look. McDuffie trying to set herself up on the left side. McDuffie a long ball just wide. Good defending again by Westfield State. Audrey McDuffie had a chance at that one a little bit wide. Also played very closely by a couple of Owls defenders. Roback will kick it in. Still bumping around, comes down before Dewhurst. She puts it airborne again. Nearest is McDuffie, but it's headed instead by Cochran. Rumbles out off of possibly Crooks. Either way, it's Bears ball. Susa to throw in. White really dogging Abby Shea there, and it pays off. Here comes Parker the other way with a full head of steam. Sweeney's on top of her. Parker trying to open up some space. She puts on the Jets. Parker across, too tall, hits it off the bottom of the upright. Herbeck going to defer this goalie kick to Dewhurst. They're trading shots here with 31 minutes to play in regulation. 
There's one goal, Owls one goal from Dewhurst and Muratsuka respectively. Both those goals coming off free kicks. Other than that, the defense for both of these teams has not let anything up. Couldn't spin through out the back. It's going to be a corner kick for Westfield. Forced well by the play by Slattery. Bears are going to have to put their heads together to keep it 1-1. Ball in, bounded around, almost trouble. Conrad trying to get over to it to clear. Crooks chasing her down. Crooks blows a tire on the way in, but it's going to be last touched out of bounds by Conrad. Throw in for Cochran. Half an hour to play in regulation. Cochran just going to drop that one right in front of her. Conrad trying to break through the middle. Slip forward, Chris Afidis with a little bit of room, runs right into Slattery. Well, there's going to be a no call on that one. It was actually Abby Shea who got it over to Chris Afidis. Some big contact with Chris Afidis there, but again, they, they've just been letting him play. A couple of fouls where it's been, you know, you got to call it. But otherwise, they are really just letting them get at each other. Yeah, there's definitely been some where... You wouldn't be mad if they called it. You wouldn't be mad if they didn't. And that goes both ways. It's been really physical. A couple where you say, yep, Bridgewater pushed. A couple where you say, yep, Westfield tripped, so on and so forth. Yeah, absolutely fantastic officiating this whole game. It's been mutual combat, more like. <laughs> Going both ways. Tearing quickly. Here's Bertiam in the middle. Bertiam with some room right to Levesque. Levesque gets this one about to midfield. Maybe the only thing better than the officiating has been the goalkeeping. Bouncing, bouncing, still pushed. Thomas, with some room, slips forward to Parker. Parker, this team's scoring leader. Trying to chase it back down in front of Chris Afidi. She slides on her stomach like a penguin. Still no call. Westfield can't believe it. And Parker takes a second to get up, but is now back on her feet. This Bears defense has done a good job at mitigating Parker. Whoever's been on there, Dewhurst or Brown, it's been Brown for a majority of the game, but they have not let her get much. Chris Afidis and White kind of clotheslining each other. Duffy trying to push it forward. It's a throw in for the Bears out of bounds off of Westfield. Just going to drop it off for Mia Chris Afidis, but she's going to lose it quickly. Bertiam. Aside for Crooks. Crooks stops and now starts again. Push forward intended for Tallis a little too far. Dewhurst chases it down. And out the side. Just going to kick that one out. Going to set up a throw in here for Cochran. Over the top, never quite made it to Tallis. Thomas is pushing around Sweeney. No foul one. It's going to be a goal kick for the Bears. All good defense back there from the Bears. This time Jenna Sweeney. Again, it looks like it's going to be Dewhurst taking this goal kick. Just over 27 minutes to play in regulation. A goal each. Bears will make a substitution. Shea comes out. Gomes re-enters. Gomes the only sub to come on for the Bears in either quarter. This one bounces out of bounds. Either half. Too much on that for Robart. Another throw in for Cochran. Owls are waiting to make a sub. We'll see if that happens, and now it will. Looks like coming off is going to be Livy Crooks. And coming in is McNary, who came in as a sub in the first half as well. I believe that was also for Crooks. Kiki McNary can be sneaky offensively, still waiting for her first goal of the campaign, but she has five assists. Again, out of bounds off the Bears, another throw in for Cochran. Chris Afidis can't quite get to it before White can. 
Bumps it over to Bertiam. Bertiam through the middle. Moratsuka too tall. Keanu Maratsuka knocking at the door again. She's had quite a few attempts. The Bears defense has done a good job shutting her down. That one just a little bit too high. Long goal kick. McNary trying to get a foot on it. Now White does. Through. Disrupted by McDuffie. Aside to Robarge. Robarge across. Meant for the cut in Conrad. She's in a bit of a rundown with Hurlbert. Last touched by Hurlbert. Sousa looking for her target. It's Chris Afides in the corner. Disrupted by White. And they are going to say Bridgewater State. Well, first the call was a Bridgewater State corner kick, and they change it now to a Westfield goal kick, and the crowd's not feeling it. Side judge initially called Bridgewater State corner before changing her mind. Chris Afidis tried to make a play on that goal kick, missed it. Parker pushed through Moratsuka. This could be dangerous. Moratsuka trying to stop short, get some control, gets bumped into by Lassard. Tough contest, no foul, and Lassard sends it out the side. Good job once again. The Bears' defense is Lassard and Brown. Call's actually going to be final answer that Bridgewater State was offside on that last play were offside and that's what led to the turnover point blank Parker trying to find the arc does right out of the reach of Logan Levesque Parker she was covered closely amongst them with Sweeney just a fantastically played shot for the goal Westfield scoring leader it was only a matter of time you couldn't keep her quiet the whole game and Delaney Parker shows why she leads the team in goals I believe that might be number 20. Number 18 on the season. Well, she's not keeping count. What matters right now is Owls 2, Bears 1. Bridgewater State led 1-0 at halftime. And now it's Westfield with the advantage. Massive score for Delaney Parker. Still plenty of time to answer back for the Bears. 24 minutes left to play here in the second half. We're getting a good contest by Mia Chrisafidis. Chris I'm sorry, that's Sydney Sousa. Sousa gets it peeled off her subsequently and sent out of bounds by Cochran. Bears have a little under 24 minutes to find a goal and keep their season alive. Sousa to throw in. Conrad. Conrad just gives it away. Correction, not Conrad. Kelly Powers, I looked at the knee brace and got it twisted. Both Skyler Conrad and Kelly Powers, who has just subbed in for Sweeney, have braces on their left knees. And without looking at the jersey number, I mistakenly saw a left knee brace and made an assumption. Also doesn't help 10 and 16 can be easy. That too, that too, that too. Moritsuka again dangerous on the left side, disrupted there by Dewhurst. And she sends it out of bounds. Owls make a substitution of their own to match. Tallis out, Moran in. She was looking for Robars down the sideline, wasn't able to find her. It's going to be a throw in here again for Cochran. McNary gives it away this time. Moritsuka doesn't understand it, thought it was deflected off of Bridgewater State. Chris Afidis, the spin move. Now she puts on the Jets, trying to tear through a double team. Does, hits the deck, but manages to get it away to McDuffie, who then gives it away on the pass. Chris Afidis cuts in, knocks over White, no foul. Uh, Chris Afidis overran that one. Moratsuka and Lassard in a rundown. They were originally looking for real damage. Lassard kicks it out, but just to the right side of the flag to make it a throw in and not a corner. Looks like Kiana Maratsuka is going to get credited with an assist on that goal. Number one and two scores for this Westfield State team connecting right there for their second goal of the game. McNary and Cochran tiptoeing it along the line. Cochran trying to make a little bit of space, now trying to run back down what she's created. It goes out the back. It's a goal kick for the Bears. Cochran was able to pick it off Robars, but couldn't outrun Mia Chrisafidis. Nope. Sydney Souza. 
Again, good defense by the Bears. Huge heave of a goal kick by Dewhurst. Gets as far as Conrad, who brings it to ground. Robard's trying to tear out in front of it, but she won't get to it before Roback. McNary, the header. Maritsuka brings it to ground. Push forward intended for Parker. Nobody quite there, but Bertie on the streaking forward. Dewhurst trying to interrupt. Does, puts it out the back end, but it'll be a Westfield corner. Good play there by Dewhurst. Able to kick it out of bounds. That was a tough situation. Bertie on wide open was able to work her way past Brown. Just had Dewhurst left to beat. 20 mon 21 minutes left in regular time, excuse me. Aaron White to take the corner kick from the left side for the Owls. Aaron White's taken all the corner kicks for Westfield State today. Hasn't taken one from that side just yet. White, the arc in, not a ton of cut. Header backwards. McNary got her skull on it. Again, earlier you were talking about the lack of wind, and that shows right there. So that one goes wide. Long ball into the left from Slattery. Sub in for the Bears now. Looks like Shea returns. Here's Conrad. Conrad with some room across to Robard. She has to put on the brakes to try to keep it. Disrupted there. Hard collision, and that's going to be a foul all day. Shea came in for Powers was the substitution made there. It was Bertiam who hit the deck. And it'll result in a free kick for the Owls. From further out, but nonetheless a free kick. Parker, trying to spin. Parker, hits the floor, no foul. Shea the other way, Shea contested tough by Bertiam. Stout wall there. Under 20 minutes to play. Owls with the two goals to one lead. Boy, this has been a stunner so far tonight. That one's going to go out of bounds off of one of the Bears following the throw in. Matos will sub into the game for Skyler Conrad for Bridgewater State. And again, out of bounds off the Bears. Headed out that time. Bears have kept it relatively light, like you mentioned earlier, Luke, on the substitution end. They're trying to operate with the crew they have out there mostly, save for a couple of swaps here and there, but no major wholesale switches. And Westfield doing largely the same. When they have brought in substitutions, as that's going to be out of bounds. When they have brought in substitutions, it's been players who are proven players who come in a lot. Somebody like a Kiki McNary. Yeah, a lot of the same faces substitution-wise for both these teams. McNary's typically a starter for this Westfield side. Came off the bench today. West a matchup based thing. What? Westfield's going to get a much closer free kick here off the foul. With 18 minutes left, looking for a set piece to ice this one would be a huge get here for Westfield State, but from that angle, it'll be difficult. Moritzuka's taking it. Ball in. Headed away by Brown. Not quite out of the woods. Moritzuka trying to spin in close range. Disrupted there. Brown again reading it well. Here come the Bears. Souza tearing up the right side. Chris Afidi's trying to step forward. Not quite. Big rejection backwards. Parker putting on the wheels, thinking she can get a brace out of this one. Chases it down on the right side. Parker puts the spin move on Lassard, disrupted there by Souza. Parker showing off the speed right there, breaking away from Souza and Lassard. Ultimately, the Bears able to get away with one there. And Souza collected on it. And speaking of speed, Robarge. Robarge, Cochran reads her well. That one's spun out by Cochran. Correction by Robarge. Cochran to throw in. Both of them were unsure of who that went off of. Yeah. <laughs> for the call. Had me uncertain too. Parker trying to put the spin move on Lassard out of bounds. Stays with the Owls. Oh. 
Throwing meant for Thomas Whistle. Foul, that, that might have been a handball. Looked like it might have grazed Thomas's elbow. Deep kick in now for the Bears. Nobody back there to collect on it other than Colbert. Robert pushes only as far as Matos. She gathers on the right side. Matos trying to keep it on the right disruption there. Bears get to stick with it, though. Last touched by Slattery. <laughs> That's big. Throw in for Brown, trying to do the dance with Moratsuka. Now another throw in out of bounds again. Brown trying to find her target this time. Brown just going to opt to dump it back. But that one goes out of bounds. It was Lassard, and she couldn't gather. So a decent opportunity for the Bears. It goes awry right there. Nothing going to come with that. Still 15 minutes left to play. But the Owls have a 2-1 advantage. And they are not going to be letting up on the defensive end anytime soon. Throw in for Westfield. Bertiam breaking through, broken up by Lassard. Parker still manages to get a boot on it. Now it's sent back the other way. Shea trying to collect it, puts the spins on Cochran there. Correction, McNary. Robarge doing the dance now with Cochran. It's out of bounds off of Cochran. That time they both knew who it went out of bounds. <laughs> it was a little bit clearer for us, too. Susan looking to throw in, looking for her target. Deflected out narrowly by McNary. Crowd's feeling some energy. Robarge trying to keep it in, pushed out, and falling out of bounds as she pushes it out is White. Bears ball. Sydney Souza set for the throw in. Has to get the ball first. Bears have 14 minutes and 40 seconds to find a score to keep their year alive. Maratsuka. Dewhurst trying to spin around. Maratsuka picks it off her. Kiana Maratsuka tearing the other way. Looking for a numbers advantage. Slips on the right. McNary breaking that one up is Brown. No foul on the play, but it's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Owls. Another throw in for Cochran. And another sub here, possibly. She's uh, waiting for her teammates to get in the area. It's McNary who'll get a breather. You've got to imagine Westfield State's looking for ways not only to keep their legs fresh, but also to chew clock. It's Livy Crooks who'll come back in for Kiki McNary. Parker. Ball across. Oh, here's a clean look almost from the side, just over the top. Tia Tallis. She put the moves on one of the Bears defenders down there right in front of the net. Nothing going to come out of that one. Bears also going to make a substitution here. A foot lower, and that might have been the dagger. Sweeney looks like she'll re-enter for Bridgewater. Played first by Chris Afides. Sweeney comes in for Tristan Gomes. Matos forward, and for McDuffie, interrupted there by Ottomanello. Back only as far as Souza, challenged by Crooks. Mutual collision, no foul on the play. Another collision, no foul again. Bouncing around. Out off of Bridgewater State. Dewhurst couldn't gather it up. 13 minutes to play. Owls up by a goal. Parker. She's watched closely by Dewhurst right there. That one's going to go out of bounds off of Dewhurst, though, and Cochran's going to take a throw. Every minute of game time feels like a lifetime in moments like these. I'm sure it's even more, for, even more so for the players down on the pitch. And especially if you're Westfield State, who would love this clock to chew up as quickly as possible. Across too much. Just couldn't quite get her boot on it, so it'll go out the back for a goal kick. Not sure who Cochran was looking for on that one. Regardless, Dewhurst going to be taking the goal kick once again for the Bears. Trying to get something going with the remaining 12 minutes of this match. Might have been expecting either Crooks or Parker to gather it up. Boot forward by Souza. McDuffie trying to push something forward. No white shirts in the area. Robar just tearing forward. And Roback has to get on top of it. From the edge of the 18, Roback. Yeah. 
Maratsuka's taken off, but Dewhurst gets it quickly to Levesque. This one kicked out of bounds by the Bears. Souza handles that. Cochran will throw it in. The second half has really, as the scoreboard would show you, belonged to the Owls. Trying to keep it that way, but they've only got 11 more minutes these Bears do to find a score. Moritsuka wasn't sure what she wanted to do with it. Now she'll try to chase it down. Still gets there just before Dewhurst. Now Dewhurst trying to spin her out of it. Somehow does. She's Dewhurst forward. Too tall for McDuffie. McDuffie's trying to get a little bit of space. Chris Afidi's trying to put herself in the middle. Broke that one up nearly, but it ended up with White. Now here's Souza trying to trick someone out of their meal. Sweeney grabs it from her. Robards trying to corral it. Just a bit of a mess, and now it ends up with Tallis. Tallis, the spin move. Push aside. Bertiam, not quite. Parker on the left. Parker, ball in too tall, just across the face of the goal. Ends up angling out the back for a goal kick with 10 minutes left for BSU. Bears looking for anything here as Dewhurst kicks away the goal kick, but is quickly taken back by Westfield State. Deflected skyward by Muratsuka. Comes down to Souza now across to Lassard. Bears need to generate a good drive and they need it fast. Here's Robards with a little bit of room. Robards challenged initially hard collision there. It's going to be a foul and Bridgewater will get a free kick. That's just what the Bears need here with under 10 minutes left to go. Collision there. Robards draws the foul call. Dewhurst, no pressure. Setting up for another free kick. This time she'll be taking it around the 35. Bears have 548 seconds of game time. That one deflected off the wall. Tough look. It worked out for Westfield. Wow. Brown trying to track it down. Lassar does. Pushes it the other way. McDuffie trying to feed it through to somebody. Anybody in the middle can't quite. Maratsuka now being pressed up. Nearly a look. Bears almost had some momentum, but not quite. Bertiam tearing the other way. Bertiam just breaks through a wall of defenders. Push forward that time, interrupted. Chris Afidis in the midfield, challenged by Maratsuka. Ottomanello playing up now. McDuffie is tearing out in front, but Herbert's going to get to it first. Out the side, it's a throw in for the Bears. Eight and a half minutes to play. <laughs> this is going to be wire to wire. <laughs> out the side promptly. McDuffie in the corner, looking for a way out. Chris Afidis trying to find a spin move. Double teamed, pushed the other way. Out the back this time. They're going to say goal kick for the Owls. Last touched by Bridgewater State. Tough look for Mia Crucifini. Absolutely swarmed by a handful of Westfield State defenders. Under eight minutes left in the game. Bears hoping it's not the final eight minutes of their season. Dewhurst stays on her feet somehow. No foul. Shea slips through the middle. Pass to Dewhurst. Dewhurst trying to spin around, slip through, intended for potentially the cutting Matos. She doesn't quite get to it. It's pushed out the side by Roback. Bears have no time to waste, under seven and a half to play. And down a goal. Looking for the throw and drops it right in front. Chris Afidis along the back line, trying to get something forward out the back, going the way of the Owls. Can you 
Seven minutes to play. Free kick now. It was a foul, actually, that turned that one over. Maratsuka. Bertiam trying to feed across for Aaron White. Crooks trying to chase it down in the rundown. Gets it. Tiptoeing along the line. Good footwork right there by Libby Crooks. Crooks across, gives it away to Shea initially and up to Robarge now. Robarge trying to break through, no luck. She's double teamed. Thomas, spin move. Through to Parker. Parker runs right into Lassard. Tough collision. Lassard hits the deck. Bertiam through. Levesque makes the save. Levesque's got to get this one away. She'll kick it down to midfield. Six to play. 50-50. Mato's trying to gather. She'll throw it in. For the throw. Chris Afidis hits the ground. <laughs> Out the side, waiting for the call. It's going to be a throw in for the Owls. Didn't look like from up here that went out of bounds off of one of the Bears. Owls will make a substitu substitution as well. Try saying that five times fast. Crooks back out, McNary back in. I've seen Crooks and McNary swap places quite a few times here. And they've both had their fair share of opportunities to give this Bridgewater defense quite a spook tonight. Clock rolling five and a half to play. Bears need a score and they need, it, they need it fast, I should say. Brown looking for her throw in, her optimal throw in as it were. Heave over the top, crowd trying to stay in this one. Out of bounds, last touched by the Owls. Quick throw in Matos, up ahead, Dewhurst playing up, trying to challenge Ottomanello. Last touch, they say, by Dewhurst. Five minutes to play, and with each one of these goal kicks, you can feel a little bit more air come out of the house here. Herbert will take the goal kick. Shea tried to get a boot on it, wasn't able to. McNary now over to Cochran. McNary gets it back, but deflects it out of bounds. She can't get her own second wind. So it's Susan now with a throw, and Mia Crisofini's calling for it, but she'll dump it down the sideline instead. Robarge back, back beyond everyone. Parker's trying to race for it. Lassard boots it the other way. Parker might have gotten a piece of it. Crisofini is absolutely wide open on the throw. Crisofini gathers it here. Easy for me to say. Try to dump it off the side to Robarge. Robarge, good deflection over, trying to get it to McDuffie, but that's broken up on the pass by Hurlbert. McDuffie gets it back somehow, improbably. Muratsuka reads that one though. Across to McNary. McNary up. Back only as far as Sweeney. Souza through the middle. Disrupted that time by Ottomanello. Brown chasing it down. Under four minutes to play. Stress levels through the roof here at Peter Mazzaferro Field. Bears hoping it doesn't all come down to this. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Bridgewater. Matos looking for her throw in. It's going to be Chris Afidis. Chris Afidis contest there, trying to work on Slattery. Somehow does. Chris Afidis trying to step back for it, lets it roll out. Throw in for Bridgewater. Chris Afidis takes it under three and a half. Dewhurst. Dewhurst point blank deflected. What a stop there. Cochran put herself right in front of it, and that could be a game saver for Westfield State. Back only as far as Sweeney. Owls will make another substitution. Aaron White will get a breather. Looks like Moran returns. Just over three minutes to play in the match. Owls up two goals to one. Rejected backwards, no white shirts in the neighborhood.
Bridgewater State has two minutes and 43 seconds to catch fire. Robach puts this one on, taken by Sweeney. Bouncer, headed. Chris Afidi's interruption, push forward. Robarts trying to gather a little bit wide. Roback has to grab it. More than a little bit wide, really. Well placed by Chris Afidi, but a little bit too much heat on that one for Robarts to catch up to it in time. Now we're coming within the final two minutes of the game. Throw in for Westfield. Trying to chew clock up two goals to one. Looking for a NASCAT conference victory on enemy territory. Brown and Maratsuka doing the dance. Out of bounds, it goes the way of Bridgewater. Brown looking for the throw in. Headed up by Moritzuka, still being disputed around, stays with Bridgewater. A minute 38 to play. Push forward, no one quite there. Dewhurst, Dewhurst a good read. Dewhurst across, too far for Robards. She's putting on the wheels to grab it in the left corner. Robards just keeps it in. Robards, good ball in. Looking for a look, nobody quite there. McNary out of the way only as far as Souza. Souza, ball in, nobody there either. Out the backside. And with just over a minute to play, that might have done it. Looked like for a second the Bears might have had a shot. Too much on that one for Robarge again. She had the crossover, but Duffy was the only one in the area. She wasn't able to grab a piece of it. Now we're coming within under a minute left to play. And the Bears have to get something going. Challenge there by Lassard out of bounds. 46 seconds stays with the Owls. Westfield trying to kill some more time with just over half a minute until they claim the Mazcac is their own. Push forward, Bertiam trying to spin. Backwards, Parker on the left side. 20 seconds. Out of bounds. Bears looking for a throw in. They're desperate. 11 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. 7 seconds. Bears trying to push forward. And they won't get there. Westfield State comes into the second half dominant. Two tremendous scores. And the Mazcac belongs to the Owls. Westfield State's two best scorers, Parker and Moratsuka, do what they do best to put their side on top and claim a Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference Championship. Your final score, Westfield State Owls 2, Bridgewater State Bears 1. What a fight this was. BSU led 1-0 at halftime, but Westfield State came out swinging in the final 45, and they really delivered, Luke. Absolutely. They fell down 1-0 in the first half and absolutely dominated the second half. They got off to a hot start with that free kick goal by Maratsuka and didn't slow down. Great we goal as well by Delaney Parker, and that'll do it. We assumed this would be a slugfest from the jump three leading scorers in this game. Parker, Maratsuka, and Dewhurst each notched a goal for Westfield State. It was exactly what they needed. After 90 hard fought minutes at Peter Mazzaferro Field, your final score, Owls two, Bears one, and Westfield State claim the Mazcac as theirs. Thanks so much for joining us for a MazCAC Soccer Championship doubleheader here on the Bears Sports Network. What an exciting one it was. I'm Matt Donahue. We'll see you next time around for more Bears sports action. Until then, take care of yourselves, folks, and remember that every day is a great day to be a Bear.